Hello, how are you? My name is Eric, and today we're going to talk about Dino Fresh and building a progressive web app, a PWA. Stick around for this one. Let's build a PWA here. What is a PWA? Well, a PWA is a progressive web app, and they are web apps that use service workers, manifests, and other web platform features in combination with progressive enhancements to give users an experience similarly found in native apps. Is this for mobile only? No. PWAs are built to take advantage of native mobile device features without requiring the end user to visit an app store, make a purchase, and download software locally. Some of the PWA features and capabilities are connectivity independence. So you can have your users visit a site on a low speed network and it should just work fine because things are happening behind the scenes, progressively downloading your images, JavaScript, CSS, etc., to be able to generate the page as the user uses it. So it requires a low bandwidth connection, which is phenomenal. Um, it has an app-like interface. It mimics navigation of native uh, mobile devices. So when you click on a navigation link, it should respond very quickly, just similarly to a native app. Um, push notifications can be enabled. And so you can send push notifications as well, like you would on a native app, which would increase user engagement. It also does self updates. So it stays fresh, Dino fresh. No, it stays fresh because the app, if there's changes and there's things that need to be updated, you can progressively update that. So the users always have an updated version of your app. It's safe, so it's HTTPS only. Uh, that's one of the benefits of doing a progressive web app is that you guarantee to your users that it is a secure application. And the other part is discoverability and it's an easy installation. So when you visit a website on your mobile device or on your desktop, you are presented with the option to download that app as a desktop icon and for quick access. So instead of asking a user to go to the app stores to download a mobile app, it just happens in the browser. So on an iOS device or an Android device or a desktop device of any computer, you should be able to, through a browser, you should be able to prompt a user to download your app and save it as an icon for quick discoverability in the future. Um, it also works offline, which is an incredible thing. You no longer have these pages of doom when your end user loses connection. Your app will still remain readable and viewable. Not always interactive unless you do more enhancements to it, such as if, you know, how would you submit data if you to a database if you are if the user is offline. But one of the nice things is you could store that data set locally and once the user comes back online, um, you can submit that data. So you can kind of hold it in a queuing system, if you will. So it's super incredible for that. I know for me living in New York City, being underground on a train, this became a real popular thing for me to understand how to build because when you're underground and there's no connectivity, this is a, a while ago before the internet uh, took over the whole subway system. Now I think you can connect pretty much any time, but it should work. And um, when the user comes back up from being underground, uh, the data would be submitted again. So that's really exciting news. Some of the prerequisites to get started here, we're going to need to install Dino CLI, which if you've already been following along in some of my Dino tutorials, you've probably already done this. But if not, we'll teach you how to do it and we'll create a new Dino Fresh app. So to get started installing the Dino CLI, it's pretty straightforward. You just run this command in your terminal, hit enter, and you should be good to go. With that said, now you can run a Dino command, the Dino run command, and you can go ahead and grab this link here, and that will create a new Dino Fresh project, and we'll call it Dino Fresh PWA. Once that's installed, we can change directory CD into that one, and we will then, from the terminal, run Dino Task Start to fire up our application. Now, I'm not going to do any coding here. I'm just going to give you this presentation. The next thing we're going to need to do is open up VS Code or any uh, IDE of your choice and head over to the index.tsx file and import the head component from Dino Fresh like so. And when I first started with Dino, I didn't realize they had a head component. I know Next.js has a head component. So I was just using head from standard HTML. 
that did not work. Uh, and so when I discovered that they actually have a head component, it made everything work, which it seems to um, hijack anything you have in head and bring it up into the head. So it's one unified head in your code. And it's uh, so you won't have duplication with this component. So once that's installed on your index.tsx file, you can also do this in like a, uh, if I go back here, you can also put this uh, head file in a meta component or a layout component or something that you already have perhaps on every page. I usually use a meta component, which I use for like SEO purposes. I can reference that in one of our demo projects that I've already started. Uh, I'll put that link in the description for you to, to discover what I'm talking about here. And uh, that just sort of helps keep all of the metadata and all of the imports and, and uh, things that you're going to add in as far as SEO in one file, which you can kind of apply to your layout file and pass those props down into that. From there, we're gonna add a manifest link. Inside the same file, the index.tsx file, we're going to add a reference to the manifest.web manifest file. You can also call this file manifest.json, but I believe the new standard is manifest.webmanifest. Inside of your head component, you're going to add this link. And that will reference a file that we don't have yet. Well, we will create that. The next thing we're going to want to do is add a PWA script inside the same file, index.tsx, and add the following PWA script. Now, this is a JavaScript module file. You're going to import from the CDN PWA builder package. And what that will do is it will keep the PWA updated every time it's uh, the page is reloaded and it will grab the latest version and make sure that your browser is in sync with the PWA and, and all of your assets and all of your files, all of your HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all of that stuff together. So it's going to make sure that it's staying fresh. Next, we're gonna add the manifest file inside of your static directory. So this is actually going to be the file that we were talking about before. Inside of your static directory, create a new file called manifest.webmanifest. This should be webmanifest or manifest.json file. And then add the following code snippet to it. So we'll just walk through this quick. It is a JSON object and it has a name property, which inside of this name property could be the name of your app, could be your name, could be whatever you wanna call it. And this would be a longer name. This one is the short name, probably just an abbreviation of your brand or whatever name this is up here. Then you could add uh, a theme color, a background color. And these are for the icons I mentioned earlier in this presentation, where you would have the ability to download this app on either your native or um, your desktop. And that theme color will correspond with the icon colors here. So you can style it a little bit. The next thing we'll have is we will have a display property, which will signify when you open the PWA, how will it be displayed? Is it full screen? Is it a certain size? Is it half screen? There are certain properties. I did not list those properties here, but I will reference the link to this entire API here. So you can follow along and add the properties that you will need for the manifest file. Next, we have a scope. And the start URL, what I typically do is just point it to the root. And I want to say everything on this app is a progressive web app. So start it here. When you land on this route, inform the browser that uh, this is a progressive web app and uh, let the user progressively download the assets that are required. The next is the orientation. How will it be displayed? Is it portrait? Is it landscape? Is it something else? In this case, I put any, which is a, which is a property that uh, is fine. It's a value that's fine. The next thing we'll have is icons, which this is very important. The icons are what I mentioned before. These will be the desktop icons, the brandable icons that the user will identify uh, those icons with your app. Um, so what I typically do is use the, the favicon uh, image from my website, use that image, uh, and then I'll generate these files, these image files from that favicon. And this is just a basic example. You could have many other uh, file sizes in here, different types, but there is a standard. They ask for specific sizes that um, we'll get into in a little bit. So once you've added that script and the snippet to your manifest.webmanifest file, the next thing we're gonna do is add a service worker file. So inside of your static directory, create a new file called pwa dash sw for service worker .js or ts then add the following code snippet to it 
And I'm not going to click on this, but this is, uh, I'll leave this in the description. If I click on it, it will probably break my presentation here, so I won't click on it. That will just have a list of files and functions that you can do for asset caching. So you could list out your, your HTML, your JavaScript, your CSS, your images, things like that. Which files do you want to have cached? And there's certain functions inside of that file that will correspond with those actions. Next, we're going to add a register service worker file. It's a little bit different, but this one's going to help with the updates again. So we can click on this. So same thing inside of your static directory, create a new file called pwa-sw-register.ts or js, and then add the following code snippet to it. Again, I won't click on this link, but I will leave that in the description. Inside of your static directory, create a new set of image slash icon files. So as I mentioned before, I usually take my favicon and make that in say Figma or Sketch or another design program. And I will create about a, maybe a 500 to a thousand, well, usually about a thousand by a thousand pixel image. And I will create a favicon. From that favicon, I will use something that's similar to this online tool. It's called realfavicongenerator.net. And you can generate these icons from a single file that will kick out the actual names of what you see here. And you can list out many more for different platforms. So you would select your favicon image over here, or you could take it from your URL. It will generate those icons for all of these different platforms and browsers. It'll give you a zip file. You just unzip that file and drag it into the static directory and you should be good to go. And that's it. You've just created a progressive web app. Your users will absolutely thank you. Any questions, contact me and here is a progressive web app that I have installed from the browser. As you can see, it's still responsive. Uh, this is a Dino app. And what's really cool is if you see down at the bottom of my screen, I have an E icon, which is the assets that we were just talking about. And I can go through, let's say if I want to read this blog, I can click on the blog and I can read an entry that we have here. I can blow this up. I believe I can also uh, uninstall it. You see how my name is here, uninstall Eric David Smith? Well, that is because I named it as my name in the JSON file, the manifest.webmanifest file. So if we click here, we can look at it is secure. It's using cookies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And let's see what else I can do. Um, also, if I go into the browser, and I look and I can see that it's there has some storage because I told the service worker to store the uh, HTML and other files in here. So I said, store it all, store the CSS, the JavaScript, the HTML. The other thing I want to show you is there is a service worker running and you can see it's here, PWA builder hyphen SW.js. Then you can also see the name, the short name, the description, and then you can see the theme color, the start URL, the orientation, all of the properties we set and here are the assets that are generated. So with that, I hope this was helpful. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to me and I hope this brings you value. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate you. Goodbye.